watching the clock and you're seeing the time tick down and you keep looking to the scores and then seeing where your position on the field then you're trying to figure out how many subs you have left and the time finally clicks by and you go we won and then you'd have these moments where you you'd remember who you've dedicated this to Eastern Connecticut State University is home to many collegiate athletic teams. However, one of its club teams has made a name for themselves. Eastern Connecticut Rugby is a grouping of individuals who are staunchly independent, staunchly themselves. They happen to find a common bond in this game of rugby. Nicknames have been a part of rugby since long, since forever. Um, I think a lot of times these names evolve because at the beginning of the season, there's so many new faces, so many new people come out. You know, you'll have 35 new guys at a practice and you're, you're trying to herd these kittens on the field and they're everywhere, you know. You know, Blue got his name because when he first came out, he was a big boy and he's wearing a pair of shorts that were even bigger. So they're a big pair of big blue shorts, a big blue, and it stuck. I'd say Walmart. He came up when we when we played, when we did our, my, my first run of rugger as well as his, uh, he came up wearing a pair of overalls and like a beat up hat and no shirt. And somebody just goes, we gotta come up with a nickname for this kid while he was on stage. And uh, some kid in the back just yelled Walmart because he looks like somebody that shops at Walmart. So that's where his nickname came from. What's not so great about it, I mean, it's awesome. I honestly couldn't tell you 50% of the kids' real names on the team. So honestly, it's, it's kind of cool like that. Derek Smucker was the young man who came out to rugby. Um, his freshman year, first semester freshman year, he actually came to rugby before he started classes. Um, Derek was uh, Derek was a second rower um, from Bethel. A great kid, bought into the program. We were doing community service one time, and Derek, we were at the soup kitchen. I was standing behind the serving line, and Derek was at the serving line. And this was his first time, it was his first semester, so it was fall of, fall of 2008. Um, and Derek turned around on this Friday night, and he turned around and he looked at me and he said, why are we not doing this every day? And he was crying. And I think it was the first time that Derek was actually sharing the air with someone that could have been him, there by the grace of God. And Derek at that point, got it. He got what Eastern Rugby has was becoming and has now become. I was at the gym with Judy and I think I was going to either return a call or order food or something and I looked down I had 11 missed calls and no messages and I went through the missed calls and they're all little boys. They're all people that graduated and finally I was able I called Nick Fittner and Fitz goes I don't know how to tell you this but Derek died. And so you're you're sitting in you're sitting in the, the stairwell at at the gym. Your your head just starts to reel. It was really weird. Um, a couple times when I was warming up before games, I would look over because he would usually be standing there, cheering us on while we were warming up, and he wouldn't be there. It was just a weird experience. I've never felt that before. So a bunch of us got together. A bunch of the players got together the next night. We were out at this restaurant and the boys were sitting outside and I went to pay the bill and the waitress said to me, how many of these are yours? Meaning, how many of these are my kids? And uh, I said, all of them. I said, but we're missing one tonight. We needed to be together. We needed to, to see each other and just kind of walk through stupid things Derek did. Although Derek was unable to perform on the field, members of the team remember him for his heart and passion off the field with the community and those around him. It stinks, man. It's just the worst feeling in the world knowing that like a guy who came out and played, put his heart out on the line, 
did so much for this club, did so much for everyone. I mean, he did things for me, and he's just, he's not here anymore. It's just, it's, it is devastating. He couldn't play, but, and you would think that that would be a turnoff for most people that want to play the sport. For him, it didn't bother him. I mean, maybe it did, but he didn't show it at all. He showed up to every event, showed up to every practice, and he expected the level of intensity from each and every one of us. Derek did. He didn't talk about it. He did it. Last time I talked to him, he was in the waiting room at his, uh, his interview. And he said, listen, I'm going into my, my interview now. He said, if I don't call you back, I got the job. And that was the last time I talked to him, so he got the job. The difference between doing a good job and a great job is care. Derek did a great job, um, whatever he put his hands to. For Christmas, uh, we had a couple of playoff balls from New Hampshire, and I had the privilege with a couple of others uh, to deliver a ball to his mother and to his father. And it was definitely one of the ner most nerve-wracking but greatest feelings that I've had to, to do. Uh, his mother literally opened the door, grabbed the ball, and just held it like she was holding a baby. And just you, you just saw the, the joy in her eyes, and just she couldn't stop saying thank you to us. After losing one of their own, the team knew they needed to continue to condition and train for the upcoming season. But then, Coach Ray Armini received another phone call. Uh, on my way to the dry cleaners to pick up my shirt from Derek's service, and my cell phone rang, and it was Jackie Nelson from Athletics. And she said, Ray, I just got a phone call on my, on my voicemail from uh, Dan Sheckman and he wants you, you to call him. This man answered the phone, he said, hello. I said, hi, I'm looking to speak to Dan Sheckman. He said, this is Dan. I said, hi, my name is Coach Ray Armini from Eastern Rugby. Um, you called looking for me. He said, yes, I wanted to just let you know how very much Sam thought of your program. I said, what are you talking about? He said, we found Sam's body this morning and he had fallen off a cliff. And again, I was doing the same type of questions that I did 11 days earlier with Derek saying, what happened? Fearing the worst and absolutely having that met with this information that I need to share with 65 immediate players that will shatter them. Everybody always says the same thing. You're joking, right? I didn't believe him at first. I said, ah, oh, you joking, man. No way. And uh, he was like, seriously. Like, I seen him starting to tear up. I was like, oh, shit, this is real. I laughed on the phone. I laughed. I was like, you're kidding. Like, that's, there's, you're, it's Johnny Cash. There's no freaking way. There's, no. I didn't want to believe it. And I did, really didn't at first. And I probably read that text like four times. And then after that, I remember I almost had to go home. And it was just tough. I don't know. It was a weird experience. I've never. Someone that you were friends with, that you saw two days ago, just randomly passed away. It was really hard. Throughout the whole day, it was just kind of in the back of my mind. I let my, the guys I was with know, and, but I didn't really kind of go into it because I didn't really want like to bring their day down. I don't want to bring anyone's day down. I was like going out and having fun. And uh, so when I got back, actually, got back from the beach, I just went in the shower and just bawled my eyes out. And, it was, a slow, it was a hard day. Johnny Cash's death was especially hard for me. Um, I had joined the same time that Cash did, and so me and him were were similar in some ways and different in others. But you know, we were we were buddies. Johnny had been there from the start of my rugby career. Um, he, him, and I played the same position for a little while, and uh, yeah, it's just how do you respond to that kind of thing? I wasn't ready for that at all. Just seeing him like the other day, like I saw him two days before it happened. It hit me like a sledgehammer in my chest. Yeah, I, I, people that know me know me that I don't really cry that much, but I was over in the corner, like I was bawling my eyes out. Cause he was, the way we played the game, he was the person right behind me at all times. We've been playing together since my freshman year. He was just, he just loved life. 
everything about it, I mean, even the very few times that kid got upset, he was upset for maybe a total of like 10 seconds. And then he was back with a smile on his face. I, I don't think I've ever met a kid who loved life more than that kid. He was always, always happy. Eastern Connecticut Vice President of Student Affairs, Ken Bedini, stepped in immediately. Bedini scheduled a bus to take all the players to the services. To travel together, it's part of the, the grieving process, so we were able to uh, get a bus together and uh, travel and be supportive uh, for the team, but even more importantly, uh, show a great sign of support to the family. That's one of the biggest funerals I've ever been to. Um, they were just, the crowd was probably 10, 15 people deep around the family. I mean, they were very grateful that we were all there. It wasn't just our team, there was alumni too. And, and that just shows like uh, how close everyone was. We all came together for the parents. He had a huge turnout. We had a busload of I think 60 guys there. So they were really grateful. The grieving process was extremely difficult, as it always is. However, in this situation, Coach Ray Armini thought it was best that the entire team grieve together. Actions speak louder than words, and I think just by being together, it, it kind of, it's a, it's a silent presence that we're here because we need to be here, we're here because we want to be here. As uh, rugby players, I think a lot of the guys really pride themselves on being tough and hard, but uh, in a situation of loss, you really can't, you, you can't try and be hard, you have to accept it and uh, go through uh, the mourning process, otherwise it's just gonna stay and linger a lot longer than you need to. So to have us all in one room, kind of talking it out, it was, it was very emotional, but it needed to happen at the same time. Johnny Cash was so vibrant, he was so alive, he was such a character. He was the kid that had the face out of the car window letting the sun hit him. He was the kid on the skateboard at two in the morning just because it was a fun thing to do. And then he was, blink of an eye, was gone. What did he mean? What did he mean? We loved both of your sons with all their warts and all their bumps and all their foibles. He was still one of us and he was, he was as integral with us as anyone else. The team honored Sam and Derek during their first game with a moment of silence. From there, they took care of business. The Warriors defeated Wesleyan 37 to 10. After winning their next two games, things took a step in the wrong direction. The boys cut up. And what I think it was, it was the first time since they were back at school that they actually had the opportunity to kind of relax a little bit. And I think what happens is that your grief is manifesting through some real stupid actions. And if you're doing actions that are unsafe to begin with and not telling me the truth, I'm done with it. I can't work with that. I went to the truck, I got the bag of balls, I put it on the field and I said, you know, I think you might have the wrong coaches. And we left. And we stayed left for, uh, I think, almost a week. I really didn't understand it. It really hurt me. And I was the captain of the team, and I felt really responsible for what happened. And I just couldn't let that happen. The alumni were pretty upset with us, so we had to prove for, to Ray that we really cared about him and cared about rugby. Um, one thing that we always have written on our jerseys and our t-shirts as well is all equals one, and uh, that had fallen apart. One thing, one solution that we came up with was to everybody on the team write Ray a letter. One of the notes that I got was from one of our sophomores, and he said, you know, we screwed up, but sometimes in a family that's what happens. And I, I, I really looked at that and I said, you're right. And so therefore, if this is, if this is indeed a family, then it's also my charge to move on. They returned to the field and finished the season undefeated. After winning their first playoff game in program history, the team made a run to the great eights. Although they lost to New England College, it was a moment after the game that brought tears to many. And we're out on the field and the game was over and we had won and the national rep came over and he said, uh, he, gave us, he gave us two balls. And he said, um, these are for your two players of the game. I looked at Pita and 
I'd have just went like this. And I said, well, say it. And there was much said without words being exchanged. And he said, there's no question this, this goes to Johnny Cash and Derek. Then you choke up, and then you look around, and everyone else is choked up. So you have these guys that had a huge high of, of now going, you're one game away from going to the Nationals. You're playing the defending champs the next day. But what's really important is the fact that we're still offering comfort to these two families that lost their boys. And that, that was the message that wasn't lost. We took it as, you know, Johnny would want us to live through him and to have this season be a part of him, and that's exactly what we did. For this group of young men, the program they belong to isn't just another sport to play. It is much more than that. It's a brotherhood. A group of people that just never met in their lives just joined together and just became brothers over everything. It, it, there's nothing that means more to me than the people I've met through rugby, my coaches, and the program in itself. It's absolutely a brotherhood. When I came here, I didn't expect to play. My coach in high school was a football coach. He was like, you should, you should give it a try. I did, and I instantly fell in love with it, and it was just like, these guys are they're closer than my brothers back home. I can go to any single one of these guys, and they'll be there for me. Um, it doesn't matter if it's your first semester, or your uh, fourth, it doesn't matter if you're a senior or a freshman, where oh, we always have each other's backs. Um, if anyone texts me for anything, I'm always there. Joke around, we eat together, we uh, study together, we do everything. I mean, we're such a close family. Persevere. Your life is going to hand you some shit. Life is absolutely going to give you some shit. And it's what you do with it. And that's exactly the lesson. You know, we could have crawled into a bottle and been done with the season, say, listen, you know, we don't have it. Or, how do you alleviate that pain? How do you bring comfort to that family? Because crawling in a bottle is never gonna bring comfort to a family. Honoring them and going deep into a season to be able to say, listen, they care enough about my son, our sons, their brothers, to keep going and, and every game we honor them. Every game we honor them. Every game we honor them and every practice we think of them, and that no matter what happens else in these, these kids' athletic careers, I don't believe this can be topped. Maybe you can have a better record, but I don't think you can overcome like this again. You know, I hear a lot of people that are around my age and older or a little bit younger say, you know, kids today, well, kids today haven't changed. If anything, they're better. I mean, kids give a damn. Kids care about each other. And I've yet to see a kid I can't work with. I'm, I'm heartened. I'm, in, I'm, I'm happy to be here. It's as much as I've given to rugby, I've gotten a lot more. And I'm honored to be associated with this group of fine young men.